Hello, hello, hello! Welcome back to my channel. My name is Eddie, as known as Mo to Skin, and today we're going to be talking about a new sunscreen release, and that is the Neogen New SPF 50 Airy Sunscreen Reformulation. This is a very famous sunscreen that just got reformulated. If you know or you don't know, in the past year, there was this whole thing about Korean sunscreens and how they were not testing as the rated SPF 50 or the rated PA++++ plus, 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 or less than that. So Neogen actually was, re was making this sunscreen for people who wanted something without a physical filter and something that was purely chemical, something that was lighter than their original best-selling sunscreen, and just something that is, you know, new. So this was in the middle of all that process. So they did say that they double checked and they made sure and they went to different types of labs and really tested it out to make sure it was the rated SPF 50 and that it was truly, I believe it's supposed to be. Okay, so in my light research, I do not see a PA rating for this. Um, I will say they keep comparing it to the original formula that had PA plus 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 which is the UVA rating for those of you unfamiliar with the PA rating system in Korea but basically it seems to be just the same thing but more airy and um, some couple more extracts in here opposed to the original formula which was still packed with extracts but um, that's basically the background so this is supposed to be trustworthy obviously there's gonna be even more tests done by other people but they really went towards other labs to make sure we were confident in using this sunscreen so as always I test sunscreens out by doing one application observing how I go throughout the day then I do a reapplication and observe how it acts upon itself does it pill does it build up white cast does it sting the eyes all of the, that etc and third, I finally tested under and over makeup. So seeing how makeup sits on the sunscreen, if it gets patchy, if it gets dry, if it clings, and on top of that, putting the sunscreen on top of makeup because on this channel, we want to help people learn how to reapply even over makeup. All you need is a cotton puff, the sunscreen of your choice, and just pat it on over your makeup. Yes, you'll lose a little bit of coverage, and that's also something I go into does it pick up a lot of coverage or does it not really? So we're gonna get all into that goodness. So let's start. My coffee as always. Oh God, life. So far I've been loving this sunscreen off the bat. That's what I'm saying. I've really, really enjoyed it, honestly. It has been, it's okay. It's been a while since I've been using a chemical sunscreen. I have honestly been using mineral sunscreens day in and day out. I've been using Color Science, Ulta MD, Dr. Dennis Gross, and you know, a lot of that is PR, but just I've been really enjoying it and feeling confident in using that and just soothing my acne prone skin. A reminder for anyone new here, I am acne prone and a lot of my content is for acne prone individuals. And so I have been enjoying this. It's been a ride. It's been a while since I used the chemical sunscreen, especially since everything came out with a lot of sunscreens not testing out as what they were really rated. So first things first, ingredient list. Let's go through it. Okay, so I have the ingredient list right here. Get ready. It's a very lengthy list. So it, this is a chemical sunscreen, as I said. It's got octocrylene, homosalate, um, and able benzone. And then with the skincare ingredients in here, we got haponica extract, we got a, a couple oils, orange peel oil, um, we got bergamot fruit oil, uh, we got lavender fruit oil, we also have tea tree oil, which I'm a fan of. We got citrus, lime, clove, cinnamon oil. And then we get to the extracts. We got avocado, we got primrose, we got lemon extract, we got pine extract, we got glycerin, we got rose extract. I know this is a lot, right? Raspberry extract, blueberry extract. And we also have mugwort in here. Uh, we also have aloe extract and we got another orange extract. And then we ended off with sodium hyaluronate and hibiscus flower extract. And it does have some fragrant components on top of the essential oils such as citronella, limonene, geranium, and linalool. Whew, that was a long ingredient list. 
Neogen is known to have a long ingredient list and their cleansers and their sunscreens and a lot of their stuff. Um, they have a couple things that are very basic, kind of like their calendula cleansing water, which I have, which I have not yet opened, but I used like a couple years ago. That one is very basic. It's got like maybe 10 ingredients, but most of the time they do have long ingredient list. So the thing about the sunscreen, even though I was excited and it's Neogen and such a beautiful packaging and it's a bestseller, it does have a lot of things that, you know, why I really wanted to test it. One, it's a chemical format. So chemical formats are a little tricky. They, for some people, they don't work. For some people, they burn. Some of the, you know, um, chemical UV filters in here are not as photostable as I'd like them to be, meaning we gotta reapply more often. Some people are bothered by chemical UV filters around their orbital bone, their eyes, and it has a lot of plant oils, as you saw, essential oils, actually and it has a lot of fragrant components, basically. So it's it's got a lot of potential to not work for people. So that's why I wanted to test it out. Despite those things, you can't really make a decision about a product until you truly, truly test it out. And so I'm here to do that for you so you can make a better informed decision on whether you should get this new free formulation. So day one, I applied this and applied like noise today we are back to silence <laughs> so first it applied like a dream it just melted into the skin the past neogen sunscreen which they're still gonna sell by the way that one had one uv filter that was mineral or i mean physical i believe it was titanium dioxide um or a small percentage of zinc oxide and if you had to work it in a little a little just to make sure there was no white cast whatsoever it was Barely noticeable. It was not even noticeable, especially if you worked it in. Um, so that was never a main issue. But with this one, I didn't even have to work it in. I could just press it in and not a single white cast, not a single trace of white cast because there's no mineral filters in here. So it applied like a dream and I absolutely love that. And at first glance, at first application, I did feel a little irritation around my nostrils which is kind of normal, also kind of not, but I did shave my face that day, so I was a little agitated, so I'm gonna say that's what it was. The following days where I applied it, I didn't feel much around my nostrils, but I will say I did feel a little something, but then again, I'm acne prone, I just shaved, I'm usually sensitive in that area in general, and I do use acid, and I'm on tretinoin right now, so there's a lot of factors there, but it did not irritate my skin in the way I would say, ooh, this irritates, so that's a pass for me. Now, throughout the day, it did give me a natural finish. It wasn't dewy, but it also wasn't matte, and throughout the day, it kept my skin moisturized. So I did like this for like a moisturizing sunscreen. This was really nice in that respect. So first application, nothing funky, maybe a slight little tingle, but that's it. Second day, we did a reapplication on top of itself, nothing else on top. And it did not pill, that's the first part. Secondly, it did not irritate my skin. So that's a really good thing. It's not like, uh-oh, my skin is going, why are you applying me two times? This is too much for me. So it did not do that. And I'm sensitive to fragrance. So that is really good. That's what I'm talking about. Formulation is everything. If you really want to get into depth with all that, I would definitely visit Glow by Ramon. He knows a lot about that. He studies that. That is his career, my career psychology. So he is better off with that. He knows more about that. But I totally agree with him. It all depends on formulation. And this one so far with application and reapplication on itself, awesome. So I really like that about this sunscreen. It was super easy to reapply on itself. All I used was my clean hands, blah, 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 put it on top, magic, easy. So application on top of itself, another pass. Third day, we applied this under and over makeup. So I used the Fenty Skin Tint on top of it. And so I applied it, let it set for 15 minutes, and then applied the Fenty Skin Tint. It applied like a dream. The Fenty Skin Tint is amazing, but on top of this, it just, it was awesome. It was like using a moisturizer primer. It was really, really just 
a great like set. It was like a really great way just to prime my skin and get it ready for something to go on top for the day. The other day, I felt very dewy, very natural, very just hydrated. So I really liked that this combined with that just gave me a really nice, healthy look to my skin. And so I know I was checking in throughout the day. It did not affect my skin tint, my makeup on top. It didn't cling to any dry patches. It did not do any funky. It didn't melt off. It wasn't like weird. It was actually perfect. I think this is just a really good one to put under any type of makeup because it really just moisturizes your face and just gets your skin ready for the day. It's really good, especially all those extracts. I'm absolutely in love with it. And then I reapplied on top with a cotton puff. As you'll see, I always use a black cotton puff. I love it. And I just put on the two fingers on the two finger method and I put it on my skin, dotted it around and then patted it in. I did lose some coverage. Look at the footage. See for yourself. I did lose some coverage. Nothing crazy, but I really still like that application method. And I did feel like I needed to apply a little bit more than normal just because it's true. It's an airy formulation. This formulation really is like air. It's like an essence sunscreen type where it just so, so, so it sinks into the skin. It's so light. It's just, it's a wonderful one, especially for summer. On top of it, I really liked it. It did not really affect it too much. That being said, you're always going to be taking off some coverage when you're using a sunscreen on top of makeup and using a cotton puff. It's just natural. But with this one, it wasn't crazy. It did, I didn't go, oh God, where my skin tint go? crap. It was actually not bad. I really liked it. And it really just gave my skin that glow back. And then I missed it on top. I was ready for the day. All in all, my conclusion to this sunscreen is that y'all, I like it. It's really good. I would give it honestly an eight out of 10. 8 out of 10, and I'm taking two points away. One, for all the fragrance. I really wish in this reformulation, they would have just taken away all those essential oils and all those fragrant components and really just made it like an oil-free, fragrance-free reformulation, especially in this climate where we're all talking about fragrance and they were already aware of the SPF rating. I really wish they would have done that. Maybe next time, Neogen. Second, um, I wish they would have put more UV filters in here just so it was a little bit more stable. Um, like I really wish they would have put like more awesome UV filter UV filters from Korea. They have some ones that honestly I've seen here in the Western part of society. Like, honestly, I really wish they would have used those filters. I really wish they would have had five filters, but they still have three, something I would find in the drugstore. So there's that. And honestly, the other component is that price point. I really wish they would have given us more or actually made the price less. I believe it retails for like $25 on Soko Glam right now. And on some websites, they're a little bit more like $28 or $30. Um, so I would definitely check out on Soko Glam for the best price. They actually even have a kit. So I don't know if it's sold out yet. That's actually how I got it. I purchased it with my own money. All in all, I guess 7 out of 10. It's really good, applies well, reapplies well, works with makeup, works on top. Like I said, the only thing I have with this is the price point, the fragrant components, and I really wish they would have added more UV filters, especially in this climate of sunscreen and not trusting it that much. But all right, that's my video. I really hope you guys liked it. If there's anything else you guys want me to review or record, sound off below. Tell me, what's your favorite chemical sunscreens right now? And tell me, are you gonna try this one out? Do you like the original? Do you like this review? Let me know. Please remember to subscribe and leave a like on this video. Thank you so much for supporting me. There's always affiliate links down below in the description box where you can save a bunch of money on different skincare websites. Um, always check it out. All right guys, have a wonderful day.